boat that can go in when the officers go in and, and if we eventually have to come into the camp and clear it out, the plan is we have 15 members of the media, five from the print, five from uh, photojournalists, five uh, regular uh, uh, cameramen with video cameras, and five folks with uh, five of their uh, anchors uh, come in with the police right at the very beginning and have complete access to everywhere inside the, uh, inside the uh, occupied zone and they'll be able to take all kinds of film, uh, still photos, video, uh, print, and be able to uh, disseminate that to the pool and then uh, that'll be accessible to all the different media. Are there any independent uh, journalists, i.e. blogosphere, who are not uh, beholden to corporations that have been uh, allowed into a public space? Well, they're certainly allowed in there as long as they want. The space is open to everybody, uh -huh. obviously, now and forever. But once we declare that it, at some point, if this gets declared a unlawful assembly, then anybody inside of there, including the members of the media, will be subject to arrest. Now, um, people that we are uh, we have invited into our pool for the pool cameras, the 15 people are all credentialed media members. Um, some of them work on the blog as well as as uh, doing um, print stuff, but th that would be for uh, the 15 people that are brought in there with us. So if and when whatever happens, we'll have a bunch of uh, media members in here as well. But How do you, did you actually guys anticipate make the that selection happening? Selection of who these 15 people are. We. Uh, Put out a notice to all the members of the media in our in our uh, pool. We uh, we have a uh, large number of people that we have on uh, an email tree. We send it out to all those, everyone from the Associated Press to New York Times, LA Times, everybody. We invited them to a meeting. We had everybody put their name down on a card, and we allowed them to draw those names out of a box. So we picked a, a certain number from each of the different uh, media's. And we were ended up uh, so it's kind of an team. equal opportunity employee basically just for like those that got the tweet. For well, those who could, and, and for got. those who could get to the LAPD headquarters within an hour. Well, we had plenty of folks there. There was uh, uh, everybody that's on our website, and they were all credentialed media folks. So they were the ones who were invited into there, and they all that's the ones who are going to be there. Of course, that, anybody else who's here is welcome to videotape anything they want, anytime they want. Is that a real tie? Uh, <laughs> I admit it's a little bit wrinkly right now. <laughs> no, it's all right. Yes, it is a real tie, but it's a clip-on tie, not a pull-off, not a tie. Commander tie. Smith, do you actually? And I'll tell you. Okay. Wait, I want to. I want to answer that question okay, first. Yeah. Just so you know, the reason why cops wear clip-on ties is because if you got a necktie around your neck, it's a real easy thing for someone to grab and drag you around or even choke you. Wow. So our policy is that we have to have a clip-on tie just like I had when I was in second grade. Some of the movies where they're wearing the tie and they actually have a grab something, that's totally movie prop. That's exactly why we have this, because uh, you know what, you can yank this thing off and run away with my $3 clip-on necktie. It's a tactical tie. Yeah. Okay, we spoke to a member, of the, um, day, uh, a member of the corporate press who is part of the pool and she had spoken to an ethics professor who said it, they thought it was a good idea that you were limiting access to the operation because it was going to basically be a paramilitary operation and it would keep people safe. We imagine that he was talking about the journalists being kept safe because if it's a paramilitary operation, the people on the ground on the other side of a paramilitary operation, i.e. the peaceful assemblers here, um, would be catching the brunt of that. Is that what's going on here? Well, my concern and our concern for the police department are for three different groups of people in a city situation like that. And I would say our concerns are equal. Our concerns are equal for the members of the media that are accompanying us. Our concerns are equal for the police officers that are conducting the operation, whatever operation we do. But our concerns are also for the folks that are here, because we don't want to hurt anybody. We don't want to injure anybody. We, this has been a peaceful assembly. This is the hallmark of, or of Occupy LA has been a peaceful, nonviolent assembly. And we want to continue that. We hope to continue that through the rest of forever. And so we hope that tomorrow or next day or the next day or whenever anything happens and the police have to come in here and close the park, we hope that uh, it, it ends up being a peaceful, nonviolent, uh, and, and we hope to not arrest anybody. We, we hope we can continue to uh, support your First Amendment rights and maybe in another, in another way or in another manner besides living on the park. Would you consider the uh, pooling of cameras analogous to the U.S. military's pooling of cameras, uh, the embedding process in the uh, Iraq invasion? Well, I don't, I don't think so cause for a couple of reasons. One, the streets around here are going to be open for the media to film from anywhere. The problem is they can't get inside there because all the tents and they can't see inside of there because all the tents are there. So we want to be able to give them complete access to everything. The other problem is, like you saw on Thursday, or on Monday morning, right here on this corner, there were a ton of media guys and a ton of folks with cameras out there, and they became part of the problem. They wouldn't get out of the intersection. They wanted to get the great shot, and we, we appreciate that, and we're trying to help them. But all of a sudden, I had 35 guys with cameras all filming the 10 guys that were left standing on the corner. So it became a problem for all of us because, you know, we try and open the streets. 
35 guys with cameras, it becomes problematic. So in order to keep everybody safe, the media, the cops, and the members of Occupy, we want to limit the number of cameras that we have in here. We think 15 is pretty good for a number of journalists. So you do or do not size. consider it similar to embedded? I would think if we embedded somebody, I'd have somebody working with me now. They'd come to our meetings, they'd hear about our sure. plans, and sure. nobody's coming to our meetings, hear about all our plans. How does limiting access to the press uh, uh, protect people? Well, I think it protects the it will protect the press members from any uh, anything that happens to them. We've seen press members before. Remember the uh, the DNC, the Democratic National Convention, two thousand, two thousand. A couple of people, some press people, got hit by rubber bullets. We ended up getting sued. We had a decision from, uh, called the Crespo decision, which details basically what the police department is required to do with respect to the media. So, with the Crespo decision, we have to have a media safe zone. We have to provide them. A certain amount of access as much as we can. Was so, that the one that was overseen by Kroll and Bratton right before he became chief of police of LA? You know what, I don't recall who was the uh, person that was uh, in charge of that, to be honest with you. Do you know who made the judgment call on showing the, the SWAT force on Sunday night, but then backing off? Who, who made the decision to back off? The, the, um, I'll happy to explain that to you. The incident commander on that operation was uh, Deputy Chief Jose Perez, who's in charge of downtown. Interesting thing you should ask about that because um, we didn't have the SWAT guys, the, the Metropolitan Division, who's the guys that came in that do a lot of our crowd control, control stuff. Those guys weren't working that day. They were on a day off. What we had to do, since we had so many people here and they were in the streets and they weren't leaving, we had to call those guys in from home. So all those guys had to come in from home and we had to call cops in from all over the city to bring them down here into downtown to handle the overflow crowd and try to get the folks out of the street. So it got some point where the cops that were assigned here and the cops that we called in just couldn't handle it because there were too many people. We called in the Metropolitan guys. They came from home and they're the ones who suited up and came in here and stood stood down here. Commander Smith, do you uh, feel personally that or do you anticipate any kind of uh, action to remove us from the park within the next 72 hours? You know what? I'm not allowed to talk about any timetables and I'm not allowed to talk about you know, when or how we, we do different stuff. Um, I think the bottom line is we're looking to make sure that we give everybody the opportunity to leave. You know, there's social workers that are walking around here now that are asking people, if you're truly homeless, we have a place for you to stay where you can some shelter besides living in a tent here. We're trying to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to leave and take their property and, and continue to protest in a, in a lawful manner, maybe somewhere else, maybe in some different type of protest. Why not here? How about those of us that are truly peacefully assembling here to redress grievances? I think... Sorry. No, sorry. Sorry. No, he, Go ahead. No. I was saying both interests would have to be present if you wanted to be at Occupy and Closer. If you are, say, homeless, if you're kind of but you are also a peaceful protester, and both those things are true. Then, yeah, Occupy is your part. Something I really want to say to you is this is what I consider safe. I don't consider that what I consider that offensive. I consider outside pressure of getting the correct cut of what needs to be filtered.